the recent years, uh, we've been looking at two uh, new methods which, which you can quantify the nerves. Uh, one is uh, the skin biopsy, which is a minimally invasive technique, uh, and you can count and measure under the microscope uh, the, uh, the number of uh, peripheral nerves, of, of sensory nerves in skin. This is one method. And the other method is corneal confocal microscopy, uh, which uh, is an in vivo laser scanning microscopy uh, which uh, quantifies the, the number and the density of the corneal nerves. The corn cornea is uh, richly innervated by the trigeminal nerve um, and using appropriate software you can uh, calculate the, the density of these nerves and the length of these nerves and the, the density of the branches and so on. And these are new markers of small fiber neuropathy which give you um, morphological information uh, about the extent of, of uh, small nerve fiber loss. And uh, these techniques uh, in future should be uh, used in clinical trials. Uh, can also be used, for example, this CCM can be used as a, as a surrogate, uh, perhaps for, for small fiber neuropathy in these trials because it's non-invasive uh, and can be repeatedly used in prospective studies. These are relatively infrequently used methods because uh, they, especially the skin biopsy method, uh, is not easy to perform. So you need, need skill, uh, skilled laboratory personnel. Um, um, there are only few centers using this technique, but it can also be used, you know, for differential diagnostic uh, purposes. Uh, and also, if the, if the diagnosis of neuropathy is unclear, or there are doubts about the diagnosis. Uh, you can use the density of these nerves as a diagnostic uh, tool, uh, but uh, the widespread use is not possible because uh, it's a sophisticated technique. Uh, the same is true for the corneal confocal microscopy. The microscope is, uh, is, is not cheap uh, and uh, is being used only in specialized centers. But uh, I would hope that maybe the manufacturer would be able to develop a handheld uh, technology uh, which could be you know easy to use by the practitioner as well in essence there are three cornerstones which we would uh, think of uh, the first would be uh, to try to optimize glycemic control um, in the diabetic patients with type 1, type 2 diabetes, and also in those who have cardiovascular risk factors like obesity, hyperlipidemia, um, hypertension, to optimize and control these risk factors uh, in the frame of a multifactorial risk intervention. The second cornerstone in uh, painful neuropathy specifically is treatment uh, with analgesic drugs to reduce the pain but this is a purely symptomatic treatment and it does not interfere with the natural history of the neuropathy. It doesn't improve the neuropathy. It uh, only reduces the symptoms and we have to be aware of the side effects of these uh, drugs which uh, are usually centrally active drug like uh, uh, antidepressants or anticonvulsants. Uh, and the third cornerstone is uh, treatment based on the pathogenetic considerations on how um, neuropathy develops in the experimental models and these should be drugs which are able to interfere with the natural history. Uh, these should be disease modifying treatments uh, which ultimately would uh, um, reduce the progression of neuropathy or even improve it. During the recent years, we learned that uh, apart from the known factors like age, age is a significant um, contributor to, to, to neuropathy, um, and also height uh, is an important um, factor. The cardiovascular risk factors like obesity uh, and hypertension, also in hyperlipidemia, uh, are, seem to be the drivers of the development and progression of neuropathy as epidemiological studies indicate.
There is evidence that uh, optimum glycemic control in type 1 diabetes uh, would uh, uh, reduce the development and also slow down the progression. Uh, in type 2 diabetes, the evidence is uh, not as, as strong. In, in type 2 diabetes, we really don't know whether um, intensive diabetes therapy has uh, any major beneficial effect on, um, on the neuropathy. We believe that um, we need some drug treatment to try to, to slow down the progression. Um, and um, this has been shown primarily for alpha lipoic acid, which is an antioxidant, uh, in the frame of a long-term four-year study, which uh, uh, is the, the Nathan One study, which has been published uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, and that trial showed that if you use um, alpha lipoic acid, 600 milligrams per day as a tablet, once daily, uh, this uh, leads to um, a clinically relevant improvement um, of neuropathic impairments and deficits as compared with placebo treatment. But I think the research is extremely important uh, and uh, my wish is that uh, the industry would, uh, um, in the next future, would uh, still continue to uh, initiate uh, large-scale long-term trials in order to see whether these drugs are effective. Because I think, and that's the evidence, that the, um, the causal treatment, optimum glycemic control, uh, can only uh, prevent a relatively small portion of uh, uh, the cases of, of neuropathy. Still, 25% uh, develop uh, neuropathy uh, despite our uh, major efforts of uh, optimum glycemic control. So therefore, I think um, treatments which would be effective despite um, the uh, persistent, more or less pronounced hyperglycemia, uh, these treatments are extremely important and, and should be further developed and, and validated in appropriate clinical trials. I think it's a, a very interesting symposium uh, and the, uh, the talks I've heard so far were, were high quality uh, and I think um, very interesting uh, for the uh, audience because they combined, uh, you know, the newest research uh, with uh, some of the practical consequences which, which arise from these uh, new insights. Um, and I think uh, that uh, this uh, is quite a high level of education. I think uh, the society is doing a great job uh, by really um, increasing the awareness that uh, diabetic neuropathy is a serious um, uh, complication of diabetes which has been underestimated uh, by both the uh, physician and also the, the patients. We, we have data to, to show this that many patients do not know that they have neuropathy uh, and the society has been very important in, in, in um, raising the awareness um, and also um, helping to improve the education uh, on neuropathy uh, with the, uh, to the physician. So, so I would like to wish to congratulate uh, the society for, for their efforts and, and uh, uh, would think that they should continue with their, with their important work.